Hello everyone, Mission Wolf here with yet another first impressions on a new control that I picked up called the Fly Digi Evader 4 Pro. It is a mouthful and there are a lot of features to talk about here. So you may have seen that I picked up the Golly Kid KK3 Max recently and I always intended to try the Fly Digi Evader 4 Pro in comparison. They're both the same price point, so for me it was important to see which one I like more and the Fly Digi Vader 4 Pro does offer a few more features that the Gully Kit doesn't, and there are some key differences that are worth mentioning here. But anyways, I'm just going to dive right into it, and I will probably compare and contrast a little bit here and there. Um, but essentially, let's start off by talking about some features that this has that I don't think I've seen in a long time um, since the Elite Series controllers. I don't know if there are any other controllers out there that have adjustable tension reins on the analog sticks. Is that? something that exists on other controllers. I'm not sure. It's the first time I see this. And it's actually quite different from the Elite Series controller. If you guys remember, if you guys know of the Elite Series controller, in terms of the tension sticks that you're able to essentially pop up the analog stick, and then there's an accessory that you can change the tension uh, three ways, so lowest to highest. And with this one, you have multiple, like the dials are right here. Dials are right here, and you can just turn them, and it's really easy to turn. And it tightens and loosens them accordingly. And there's like, I want to say like 10 notches, maybe, maybe a bit more or so that you can just turn and tighten the thumb stick or loosen it. It's really nice. I have it set right in the medium, uh, to be honest with you, for both the left stick and the right stick. And it feels really good. A little bit of resistance, not too loose. But compared to the Gully Kit controller, um, the thumb sticks are actually seem larger, which is nice. I kind of like the larger thumb stick compared to the Gully Kit. Maybe it's just the impression that I get with the extra resistance, but anyways, it does appear la larger. Um, and in addition to that, the Gaul AK controller well, feels looser as well, which makes sense because I do have this set to medium tension, right? So, a couple other features worth mentioning. We have the face buttons, which I don't actually use on my own Pro controllers. I bind those to the paddles typically, but it's kind of cool because these ones are mechanical. They are mechanical click 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 it was very nice so very different from the membrane style uh face pads that were face buttons i should say that we're used to there's also two additional buttons by the way there's like a c and a z which you can program using the software to do different things just worth mentioning that brings me to the point about the software so this fly digi controller does have software associated to it so you can't really bind the paddles without it same thing for some other attributes like dead zones and all that stuff you do need a software whereas the golly kit kk3 max that i previously reviewed and looked at um does allow you to sort of do everything on board but that one did not have any software to be honest with you the software was pretty good and pretty easy to use um there are actually a lot of other features there that i'm not quite sure what they do so i left them untouched i left them on default but it's quite rich. I will say the app itself, as good as it is, it's also not very optimized. You can't maximize it. It stays the size that the app is configured to for whatever reason. You can't maximize it to your whole screen. It's, it's kind of weird, but it does a job. It does a job. And then the triggers. So the trigger is very similar to the Gully Kit. Um, there are two options, the full analog stick motion and these hair triggers, which I have them set to right now. What's really nice about this versus the Gully Kit KK3 Max is that the Golly Kit KK3 Max always had a bit of distance when you would press the trigger. Like it would actuate like after you had some distance traveled. It wasn't immediate. This one, on the other hand, it's more or less immediate. There's like a click right there. It's nice, tight hair triggers, essentially. Before I move on to the paddles, let's talk about the D-pad. So if you recall, the Golly Kit KK3 Max had a basic D-pad, the basic cross D-pad. Um, although it was compatible for eight directions, it wasn't necessarily the smoothest for eight directions. I'm not someone that's going to use a D-pad, but if you're someone that uses it for like fighting games or whatnot, this is a much better D-pad to work with. With the whole circular motion, it really allows you to hit the eight uh, directions easier. And last but not least, the part that I was most worried about: the rear paddles, or should I say, rear button. Um, there are four buttons, which is awesome because I'm um, someone that uses all four paddles or buttons. However, the placement of these are interesting because you have essentially these guys over here. And then if you want to actuate the guys in the middle, you kind of have to move your middle finger. 
in practice when you're holding a controller, it actually isn't that bad to do. But yeah, this was the one I was most worried about because it's very different. Oftentimes when you're dealing with paddles, they're more like one on top of the other type thing. Especially like the Golly Kid KK3 Max that we were using. The paddles were sort of styled like the Elite Series controller, which I still think probably the most comfortable paddles that I've ever used. That being said, I was pleasantly surprised by how quickly I was able to get used to the back buttons here. A lot of reviews that I saw said that the back buttons are not that great. And I think a few people rated it like 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10. Um, honestly, I would go up to like 8 out of 10. It, it feels good. The placement of it is going to take a little bit of getting used to because it is more of a sideways motion as opposed to pointing here and then going up where you would expect a paddle to potentially be. So it takes a little getting used to there, but they're quick to actuate. It's very clicky. Um, and you can tell, like, you know when you clicked it, you know? Um, but yeah, overall, it feels good. Overall, honestly, I think it's going to become my main controller. I don't see why not. It feels really, really good. And um, and yeah, compared to the Golly Kick KK3 Max, I do enjoy the look of that controller more. But functionality-wise and feel, this one, in my opinion, is superior. The uh, Once again, the Fly Digi Vader 4 Pro. Additionally, for my understanding, this also supports uh, Xbox consoles out of the box. So... That's a nice little plus as well. So overall, if I have to summarize, I'm going to compare this a little bit to the Golly KK3 Max as I do so, because that was the controller I just previously used, um, which is also a very good controller, don't get me wrong, but I will be returning it. It's just not for me personally. There are a lot of advantages that this controller has over it, in my opinion, a lot of pros that uh, for the same price point, I can't justify having the Golly KK3 Max. What does it have that's better? Uh, first of all, it has the adjustable thumbsticks, which is really, really cool. I haven't seen this, like I said, on any other controller. I could be wrong, but I just haven't seen it uh, besides the Elite Series controllers, which you had to pull out the analog stick, uh, grab your attention tool, and you had three options. This one has like 10 notches, uh, roughly, maybe more. I haven't counted them. It looks like maybe 10 to 12, maybe? 12 feels like a weird number, but it could be. Um, anyways, so you have that. You have the superior D-pad, which is really nice and clicky. The mechanical buttons, which is a nice plus. Honestly, at the end of the day, it just comes down to preference, I think, whether you prefer more the membrane style or the clicky buttons. I do like the clicky buttons. And the triggers are just phenomenal. Phenomenal. Very little travel distance needed. Bumpers are good, too. I didn't really talk about the bumpers, but bumpers are status quo. Feel really good. and. Um, Although I will say I like the look of the Gully Kid more, like AK3 Max. And uh, the paddles, that's sort of going to be one of those things where personal preference. I do think overall that the Gully Kid KK3 Max probably has like the better pedal design. It's based off the Elite Series design, which, once again, I do think is probably the best configuration. However, this isn't too bad at all. Like, once again, once you're playing it, just able to switch on over rather easy. It's just training your brain from going like up here where you would think you would press another button to the side. And trust me, there's no way you're going to accidentally click one of the buttons. So that's a big plus. So yeah, Fly Digi Vader 4 Pro. Hope you enjoyed.